Hey there, everybody. It's Anne uh, from Ikaru, and we're going to be getting started in just under a minute. I have 1214 right now, but you are in the right place, and we're really excited to be talking about cybersecurity today. All right, uh, probably just about 30 seconds here, and uh, we will officially get started right on time as soon as my computer tells me <laughs> it is time. So here we are. It's 12.15. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I have uh, Nancy here as well. And uh, Thank you, everyone, so much for listening in today. I really appreciate your attendance at our Lunch and Learn today. Thanks again. Yeah, and thanks, Nancy, for doing a lot of outreach work. You know, education is a big part of our mission. So with that, I'm going to kick right into the content. I know folks are still trickling in, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time and dive right in. Uh, I, I think everybody knows us, but uh, we're Ikaru. We've been around for well more than 10 years at this point, and we do everything from help desk through CIO level strategy and security awareness training has really been a core part of our mission. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, we want to provide enterprise class IT. And a big part of protection today in cybersecurity is about uh, security awareness. All right. So just to kind of set the start point here. Technology has completely changed the world. You know, us, we at Ikara, we love technology. We love thinking about it, reading about it. And not everybody loves technology, but the fact is it's here to stay. We're not, we're not doing things the way we used to do them. And one of the questions we get a lot, and I just got to move my video off the screen here, is you know, why do I need all this security stuff on my system? And the next question we get, if I have all the security stuff on my system, then why am I still at risk? And here's what's going on. The cyber crime is now larger than all other forms of organized crime put together. So I think any business owner on this call right now would love to have a revenue curve that looks like the one on the right side of the screen. And unfortunately, this is a report from the FBI about the that basically just shows the increase in cybercrime over the years. Uh, it's, it's big money. And the other thing to note is that everyone is a target. And we get questions about this all the time. I'm just a small business. Nobody's after me. I'm under the radar. The attacks are indiscriminate. Everybody is really at risk. And um, there's just some of the stats, uh, especially during the, the COVID crisis, FBI is reporting a fourfold increase in the number of reports that they're getting per day. 85% uh, of consumers are concerned about doing business with folks they don't think have good security practices. And about 90% of breaches are from human error. Uh, really key to note that attacks are, the majority of attacks are indiscriminate. So it's, and we're going to show a ton of different kind of scams and attacks today so you can get to see what they look like. Uh, but if you think nobody's after you in particular, it really doesn't matter. They're using automated tools. People can buy kits. They're not even computer hackers. They can buy kits on the dark web to launch these kind of attacks or phishing campaigns and all the things that we're talking about today. So uh, and this has been a core part of our mission all along is really educating smaller organizations that just because you see the headlines of the big organizations doesn't mean that you're under the radar. All right. So in past uh, webinars, we've talked a lot about security policies. These are the things you can do to stay safe. So, for example, an acceptable use policy, a work from home policy, disaster recovery policy, clean desk policy. These are all things that really make a difference in your organization. Uh, in addition, technology protection. So firewall, antivirus, anti-malware, -mal ransomware protection, DNS protection. There's a lot of things that we put in. We call it a technology stack that we put in place. But still, things can get through. And the thing we're focusing on today is employee education. So the more you know about the types of scams and attacks and different things that are out there, the less likely you're ever going to be to fall for one of these threats. 
And what's really important is creating a culture of cybersecurity in your organization. And what that means is, you know, bringing it up at staff meetings because it takes one person in your organization to click on the wrong thing to maybe take down the entire network, wipe out all of your data. So it's it's this continuous learning um, because this whole thing is like a game of chess. So you have an adversary and every time new protections are put in place, the bad actors are coming up with ways of getting around it. And that's why threats today, 90% of threats or breaches occur th through email. And the reason for that is all of, with all the security precautions in place, what happens is some stuff can still get through and it, it, it boils down to, is the user going to click on the link? I'm going to show you a lot of different examples of what kind of things are on there. But it, it's not about, you, you put on a responsible level of security on your email and that's a must, but it's important to recognize things can come through. And the kind of basis for all these different kind of threats is social engineering. That's basically the bad actors are working on trying to trick you into opening mail or clicking on links. Uh, we're all busy. Uh, we're all at risk for falling for this kind of stuff. And um, the more you know, the more protected you are. So here's an example of a fake Amazon email that came to my own mailbox this week. I have spam filtering on. I have a lot of security protections in place. And if, if you look up at the top, what's underlined and near the red arrow, in, in big letters in my inbox, it says Amazon Billing Desk. Now, if you look on a 24-inch monitor, it's pretty easy to see that, uh, well, that's not Amazon's domain name right there. But imagine you're reading the email on your phone. Okay, the, the email came in in the middle of the night, so there's a lot of red flags on this one. Um, there was also a pretty large dollar amount involved in, in this one. So you can imagine, like, maybe you get this on your phone, you think, oh my gosh, my credit card's been hacked, somebody got into my account. What are they? The first thing you want to do is, what the heck did they order for all this money? Or you might take that email, maybe you're reading it on your phone, and like, I might take the email and email it to my husband. Did you order anything? And then he clicks on the link because he got the email from me. But there's always a sense of urgency and kind of the, the sense of risk or danger. And, and this is a very typical example, and it's just funny that it showed up in my, my mailbox this week. So spam right now accounts for about half of the world's email traffic, and it, it amounts for about 20 billion in losses. So it's just, it, it's, it's basically just a waste of internet space. I've seen reports as high as 90% too. And when we do, for the spam filtering that we do, it's pretty high percentages of stuff that's gonna go into blocked or quarantine. Oops. All right, so one of the really uh, common scams or one of the tactics that the bad actors do is they kind of hijack the news. So around this time of year, you're going to see a lot of different IRS scams. And I put a URL up here. If you go to the newsroom, um, they have a, some really great resources to kind of educate you and your team. Um, there, especially folks who, every, well, everybody's filing taxes now and also our CPA clients. Uh, there's, there's scams around tax preparers as well. Uh, one important thing that, you know, that's right prominent on the IRS site is they don't initiate contact with you by email. They don't call you and demand immediate payment. So it's a red flag right away. They're not going to ask for your PIN number via an email. Important to know that. Uh, on this, you know, on the scams, um, looking out, there's social security number scans. They're basically trying to get your information. Uh, one of the really big scams, like through COVID, was massive false unemployment claims. And it sort of came and went. And uh, we know of a lot of people in the community who, you know, suddenly they get called into HR. It's like, why are you filing this claim? It looks like that person's trying to commit fraud. It's just, it's somebody else committing the fraud in their name. But now what's going to roll around is the 1099s that folks are going to get. So it, it's important to stay on top of this stuff. And, you know, like in that game of chess, the bad actors are just constantly coming up with new things that they can do. I wish they were working on curing cancer, curing COVID or, you know, something more productive. But they're working hard because there's so much money involved. That first chart I showed you with their growing organized crime revenue stream. 
So there's a lot of different kinds of email scams out there. And again, the more you know, the less likely you are to fall for them. But um, in terms of uh, confidence fraud or romance scams, somebody tries to email you and then they will seek information from you, try to you know collect money from you, get credentials, etc. cetera. Uh, investment scams, lottery, employment, etc. So basically any kind of scam that's sort of done in the real world, it's just all being done electronically right now. Uh, you know, there's other things that you're up against in terms of the adversaries. This is a recent article from last fall, GoDaddy. Uh, some of the employees at GoDaddy were fished and that led to getting some domains hijacked. So the bad actors can figure out how to go after sort of the big fish and then take over certain domains. So even a trusted domain could have been taken over by a bad actor. It's just some of what uh, they go, you know, these folks are doing all the time. And by the way, this is an article I pulled from Krebs on security. So if you're um, interested in reading more, I highly recommend uh, his blog. He's an investigative reporter, is always coming out with interesting news. Um, there's also SIM swapping is another type of uh, scam that we've you know heard of from our community. And these are the kind of things when a major corporation gets breached, it makes the headlines. The small businesses and individuals who are getting hit on a daily basis, it doesn't make the national news. That doesn't mean it's not happening. It's just it's not newsworthy on a national level. But in this case, T-Mobile disclosed that they had a data breach that resulted in um, SIM swapping attacks against customers. And what that is, is basically somebody takes over your phone number. So if you think about this, uh, a lot of us use our phones for two-factor authentication. Say you need to get that code to log into the, to the bank, etc. cetera. Uh, if somebody were to be able to take over your number, now they can pretty easily get into your banking accounts and your other secured accounts because now they can get your two-factor authentication. This is an example of, again, big headlines are out there. And these are the last two headlines were from this week. So you can get a sense of the pace of all this. This ransomware attack that was heading, hitting healthcare organizations was hitting 20 a week last, last fall. And this, these, are, these folks are getting hit to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. Again, where there's money, the criminals are just going to go after this. So... One thing to kind of think about in terms of these uh, phishing attacks or, you know, compromised credentials or the SIM swapping kind of attacks or the phishing that occurred against um, uh, at GoDaddy, think about how much information that you have about yourself that's out there on social. And the, and the popular hashtag throwback Thursday or there's popular quizzes online, don't answer those quizzes. Um, because if you think about what your security challenge questions are, there are a lot of what uh, g goes into a throwback Thursday or one of those fun, seemingly harmless quizzes on site. But um, th these kind of things can be used to basically steal your identity. So your, your, your first pet, your mother's maiden name, the name of the road that you grew up on, be conscious about protecting that information and not putting it out there online. Automated tools can be used to scrape the information. In terms of the kind of scams that are going out there, one of the very popular techniques is brand impersonation. And uh, this is a chart from a recent security report, but it's showing that uh, Microsoft is the most popular a brand that's getting impersonated right now. It's because so many people use Microsoft. So they're going to go after what's popular. You can see Zoom right there uh, below the list. And so what this is, phishing emails that are coming out to you are going to look like messages from Microsoft, from Zoom, from Amazon. And we'll go through and kind of show a couple of examples. So here's uh, a message. It has a Microsoft logo. It, it's a little off, but you wouldn't really notice that. Uh, it's not that obvious said you know, your password's about to expire. Whenever your password expires, uh, you know, if you're on a 90-day reset policy, et cetera, it's kind of a pain in the neck. So it's one of those things that you generally want to do quickly. Again, that social engineering, a sense of urgency. You want to take care of it quickly so you don't get locked out of your email. And what this is, it's just getting you to log in somewhere and basically reveal your password. 
very, very widespread kind of attack. So when you see uh, set to expire, you know, don't log in by clicking the link on the email. Go to your actual Microsoft account and, and change your password if, if you think that you need to change your password. And also be conscious of, uh, you know, maybe you're not, uh, you don't use Microsoft. If you're not on 365 for your email, then that's a giant red flag. But it's, it's so popular right now. So many people use it. Uh, FedEx, very common uh, brand impersonation out there. Uh, one of the scams, you could go out to their website to look for these. Um, I'm sure that you've seen these in your inbox or different variations of this. One of them is uh, they're trying to, your bank's trying to get an ATM card to you and they have to, uh, it wasn't deliverable and they're holding it for you and they want you to pay to basically take it out of holding and get your card. And, and, and a lot of these you look at like, well, who would fall for that? But if, if, if you ha happen to be waiting for a new card or, you know, maybe you're going to travel somewhere and, and it is an urgent issue, then you're way more likely to fall for it. Um, also, keep in mind that people forward these kind of messages. Say, hey, well, I don't have time to deal with this. Can you deal with this for me? And then suddenly it looks like a legit email. The fake uh, delivery failures or the status notifications, just be aware. I mean, so many of us have packages coming by FedEx, UPS, the post office. There are so many different variations of this. Uh, just be alert. LinkedIn is one of the emerging threats that are out there. So in a recent report from Cisco Security, they found a 47% open rate for LinkedIn phishing emails. And basically what this is, if you're, um, and, and LinkedIn is really popular among businesses, uh, you know, for marketing, for recruitment, uh, for looking for opportunities. So it's very, very popular right now. Again, bad actors always hijack what's popular. So um, if, if you get a request to connect with somebody, you're gonna get an email notification, right? I would recommend that be very careful about responding to the connect request by clicking through the link on your email. So this particular scam, it basically, so it infects a system. You got four seconds after clicking on the link in your email before your system is infected with a keylogger. And what a keylogger is, it's a type of malware that records all your keystrokes. So basically after you get this malware, you log into the bank, username, password, they got it. Uh, anywhere that you log in, uh, account numbers, anything they can get with a key logger. And, and, it, and it happens in four seconds. So this is a case where A, be aware of accepting any link request from folks you don't know, but all, do it from within inside the application. And also LinkedIn allows you to put on two-factor authentication. Highly recommend doing that wherever you can, but watch out for all those requests. Some people want to build up their, uh, their audience online and they're real eager to just accept any link request. Just don't do it through email. All right, and one of the worst, we talked about key loggers, ransomware is one of the most devastating forms of malware. And that's where your files just get taken and encrypted. So if you think you clicked on something that you shouldn't have, uh, r report it to you know, your IT point person on site, your IT provider like Ikaru, report it right away. Because a lot of times what happens right after you click on it is you don't notice anything. There's, there's not gonna be anything unusual. It actually takes quite a long time to encrypt all the files. So if you catch this early enough, and we actually recommend um, in our security recommendations, we recommend putting on ransomware protection for this reason, because it's specifically looking for the kind of changes that occur under the hood. But the important thing to remember is it, it's, it doesn't matter how important you think your data is to criminals, because they actually don't want, they want your money, they really don't want your data. In some cases, they do want the data, but in general, they just want the money. And how important is your data to you? So if you were shut down for a week or two, couldn't conduct business, lost everything, what would that mean for your business? So secure policy, policies in place are around access to your computers, the technology stack that's protecting your computers, and education, because a lot of folks think, okay, I clicked on that link, I know I shouldn't have, but 
everything looks okay, so I, I'm good. And n probably not. <laughs> Uh, another thing that uh, we want to highlight is keep your technology fresh. Um, this is uh, our blog post that we just put out this week. Try to get some information out there every week on our blog. But what we're seeing is a lot of folks, um, you know, have taken it to heart. They're getting off Windows 7. Microsoft ended support for Windows 7 a year ago. That means you haven't gotten security updates for a year on Windows 7. And that's... Um, that's something that uh, a lot of folks in the community have, have come up to date with Windows 10. But keep in mind, if you're still running an old version of Office, you've got a problem. So on the one hand, you have the up-to-date protections with Windows 10, but now you're opening your emails within Office 2010 that's no longer supported. So you've got a very weak link in your network at that point. So something to really be aware of. Keep, keep all of your technology up to date. Apple comes up uh, on the iPhones. You're, you're constantly seeing those updates. A lot of them are addressing security concerns. S some of them can have uh, inconvenient timing, but uh, please, it's extremely important. It, you're not saving money by hanging on to 10-year-old technology. You're putting yourself at risk, and the cost of cleaning up or recovering from a ransomware attack or any of the other kind of attacks, identity theft, um, are quite large. Another thing um, that we see out there we like to remind on, on a regular basis is when Windows 10 came out, they had this really convenient feature of the fast start. So when you shut down, um, it's actually just going into hibernation. What you need to do, a lot of security patches require full reboots, so get in the habit of doing restarts on a regular basis. For all the servers that we manage, we put we put them on a schedule. We're typically scheduling reboots for the middle of the night, like on Saturday night um, when folks won't be working. We typically do not schedule reboots on on desktops because of, of the risk of you know somebody might be working. Uh, maybe you're in a different time zone or you're working at an odd hour. So we want we we do give warnings, uh, a couple of warnings on the reboots. Um, but if you just stay ahead of it and do a restart on a regular basis, and keep in mind, sometimes the security updates take a long time, they're annoying, never, ever interrupt a security update. Let it play out. Try not to fall behind, because the more you fall behind, the more inconvenient those updates are going to be. Um, just showing, getting through some more examples, because the more examples of the spoofing attempts that you that, that you're exposed to, the more alert you're going to be. So here's one from DocuSign. Uh, this is a total fake. Um, the, the yellow button to review documents is going to either um, ask for a login for credential stealing. It's going to deliver malware. It's going to do something bad. And what I love about this is it even has a security warning at the bottom. Do not share this email. This contains a security. So it looks really legit, and it's, it's security-minded. Um, it's got the DocuSign logo. You know, especially in this day and age of COVID, a lot of things are being done electronically. Be alert to that. Again, popular brands, they're going to be impersonated. Another thing, um, again, just, you know, taking the news from this week is, is your browser extension a botnet backdoor? So there's a lot of different browser extensions and their convenience tools, and you can plug them in, and then some of them do cool things. Um, in this other investigation from Krebs on security, they point out the economics of these developers. Like a lot of, there's some very popular things that are, are, are money makers, but a lot of times the less known things, uh, the economics aren't there for folks to make money off of this. So they're very likely to um, maybe get enticed by getting a deal from another third party that says, hey, can we have access to can we have access to your browser extension? And they might take them up on it because it's money, it's revenue, and they may not be trying to do anything bad, but they could get tricked by a bad actor as well. So uh, it, it's a good idea to be very conscious of the things that you allow to become browser extensions because it just ultimately weakens your defense. Uh, Zoom scams are huge right now. So you might get a Zoom account welcome message or you get an invitation to a Zoom meeting. And you think about it again with that social engineering, it's like, well, wait a second, I, I didn't know, I didn't have this on my calendar. The first thing you want to do is click on it to see, well, what is this? 
or you missed a meeting. Oh gosh, you know, whose meeting did I miss? Click. So again, all that social engineering and it's, it's hijacking the popular brands, brand impersonation. Um, but think of how many Zoom meetings or, you know, Teams, GoToMeeting, et cetera. Um, this, this is just a uh, real commonplace, so be very alert. Uh, CVS, um, another really popular brand that gets impersonated a lot. Um, this, this one's for a survey. Hey, you know, why not fill out a survey, get a $50 gift card? Sounds like a good deal. Um, it's, they, they either deliver malware, you know, keylogger, ransomware, other kinds of malware, or they're trying to get credentials. Um, CBS even had a totally fake site that was set up. Um, so it, it kind of looked like CVS have a picture of a store, but it's not them. They have a warning about that on their website as well. So look for things that are, you know, URLs it's called URL hijacking. So URL is a web address and it might be CVS with like another character. It's something that's slightly off, but you wouldn't, it, it's not an extra letter or something in there that's not really easy to spot. I'm a member of FBI InfraGuard, and I get alerts on a, multiple alerts on a daily basis of, of stuff that's going on. So again, it's just really important to stay up with this and make sure that this culture of cybersecurity awareness extends to everybody on your team, because there is no way to 100% protect an organization. They, they know you have protections in place. I was on a security briefing yesterday talking about how uh, the, the spammers can bypass the email security um, by because again there's certain very common email security technology tools out there the first thing they want to do is figure out how to bypass it so they're working hard um, banks very commonly impersonated uh, this is one from American Express I'll show a couple of examples it, it's all the banks and if you get one of these and you're not an American Express customer uh, a, you know, maybe you think, well, I'm not a customer. That that must be a spam. Or you might think, oh my gosh, somebody stole my identity and opened up an American Express account in my name. Either way, it's going to cause some sort of alarm. And even the button says "quick action." You know, again, that uh, um, that sense of urgency and that kind of preying on, like, okay, I just want to take care of this. I want to take care of this right now. Here's one from Chase. It says your account's having a problem and we want you to click on this verification link. Uh, again, the logo looks good. Uh, you know, but one of the red flags here is dear Chase online customer. If it really was from Chase, they would have your name. They would have be part of your account number. Uh, watch out on American Express because they have some common account, like the last four digits are common on a lot of accounts. So it might look like, oh, they're showing you the last four digits, but there's, there's only a handful of different variations of that. So that's um, be very, very skeptical. You can always go to your bank directly or call your bank if you think there's a problem. Uh, basically, if it arrives in your inbox and it's unexpected, giant red flag. Um, here's an example from hotels.com. Again, popular brands are going to get impersonated. Again, if you're looking at this on a large monitor, you're going to see it, it says hotels.com in the big letters, but then you can see the domain is something totally different. But again, that doesn't show up in, in your Outlook um, when you're looking at your left-hand reading pane. It's not showing you the full email address. It's just saying what they said it's from. We're just saying it's hotels.com. Um, really great looking graphics. It's, hey, $50 off. Um, you know, why, why not get the $50 off if you're planning a trip? But it, it's trying to get you to click. Uh, here's one from Costco. Again, if you look at the fine print, it says Costco shipping agent. Uh, again, the domain doesn't match it, but that's always in the fine print. Uh, the logo is slightly off, but not something unless maybe if you work at Costco, you would notice a difference. Um, the real logo is italicized and the fake one wasn't. Um, but they got the red, they got the blue, um, and, you know, so many people shop at Costco, and that's that's what they're counting on. All right, and uh, lateral phishing, that's another type of attack just to be aware of. This one actually incorporates using a hijacked account. So if this is somehow if your credentials got out there 
and somebody's in your account, then they can use that to access your your address book. Um, one of the ones that you think about this is very uh, has a risk of a lot of reputation damage uh, because they could send out fake invoices in your name. This is something you know keep on top of if you get an alert that somebody got an email from you. If it was just spoofed. Like, like they typed in that it's you, but the domain's not really you. That means they did not get into your account, okay? But you'd have to analyze it to see. It, it's possible. It's very rare, but it is possible your actual account was breached, which is a very serious issue, obviously. But they would have access to everything that's in your inbox at that point. Uh, Two-factor authentication, very important. And always take a look at these kind of emails. And the way to protect against spoofing is um, putting in what's known as an SPF record on your domain. So it's only trusting the mail server that you use to send your name. So sending your name. So that will cut down on the spoofing uh, in terms of you know, you know, secure passwords and all that in terms of keeping people out of the account. Business email compromise. That's one that you've seen in the news a lot. Uh, big money maker for the criminals. Uh, Usually they're around wire transfers or also gift cards. And uh, we've gotten reports from folks in the community who just at the last minute realized it was a fake, but it, usually it's sent from a, from a boss to one of their employees saying, I'm totally busy today. Can you take care of this for me? The good loyal employee wants to get right on it. I think there's been so much education right now on wire transfers and the banks have made it really hard to do wire transfers. So they're really cracking down on this. But, you know, the gift cards around the holiday season, it's like, hey, can you get, pick up 10 gift cards for my VIP clients? Then what they do in the scam is they say, well, just give me the numbers. And so then, you know, you're typing in all the numbers and they can still, they're untraceable, basically. And, and sadly, folks fall for this. Um, this is from December in a local town in Franklin. One of the, uh, the town treasurer fell for, for one of these uh, business email compromises to the tune of over a half a million dollars. A person felt awful about it. And, uh, but there's big money to be made and the criminals, that's your adversary. That's what they're going after. Uh, one note to remember in terms of there's spoofed emails, there's links you can get tricked on clicking through that social engineering of you know trying to trick you in into clicking on that link. And whenever there's a breach that has nothing to do with you, your credentials might be out there and they'd be, they're, they're up for sale within like 20 seconds. So we like to talk about uh, dark web and dark web monitoring, but th all the criminal activity is occurring on the dark web. So the surface web is all the legit stuff that's out there. The deeper web is stuff that's password protected. And the dark web, you couldn't even accidentally go there. You need special tools to get there. But that's where all the uh, illegal stuff is happening. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this um, just pulled this out of the news. Of, it's, this is from two days ago. So a lot of times when a breach occurs, at a major company, and I, I'm not sure if it's Malaysia Airlines, I don't know if anybody on this call is on their frequent flyer program, but a lot of airlines and hotels have been hit by things like this. But they took nine years to notify people that they had a breach. Nine years, stuff was floating out there. So if you had a unique, secure, strong password for Malaysia Air, Airlines that you only used for them, well, nobody could use it for anything else. But uh, your information would have been sitting out there for years, and it's very common for there to be a minimum of six months. So if you think about all the different places that you log in, one thing that's extremely important to do and something that's ex extremely important to talk to your staff about is if you think about all the different places that you log in, the average person has 50 to 70, maybe approaching 100 different logins. It is impossible to remember that many strong and unique passwords. It is not possible. So what people wind up doing is things like, you know, putting it on a post-it or they use really simple passwords or uh, they use the same password at multiple locations. So here's a problem. If um, it's Malaysia Airlines was breached, but LinkedIn gets breached every two years, bank, all, all the banks, et cetera. If you're using that password in other places, the bad actors are going to do what's known as credential stuffing. They're just going to try it at every other location because most people use common passwords among multiple sites. And that's why we 
rec recommend using a password manager, so talk to us about that. But I, I also like to go over this chart because um, they're not sitting there kind of guessing like in a Tom Cruise movie what your password might be. They have a cracker that can just automatically try these different things. So, and this chart shows how the length of the password and the complexity of the password really make a big difference in how long it takes to crack a password with an automated password cracker. So, you know, anything that's just only numbers and, it, you know, even up to 10 characters, it's under a minute. So, this is something to think about. The other thing that happens when there's a major breach, one of the things that we get occasionally is a report of the most popular passwords in there. If you see a password that you use on this list, change it immediately. All right. Um, so this is, you know, it's human nature. We, we want to be in control of our passwords. So we think that memorizing them puts us in control. But the fact that we can't remember, you know, 50, 70, 100 strong and unique passwords causes people to actually wind up doing the opposite of making themselves less secure. Account takeover. Uh, so when people do get into accounts, Office 365 at one point had 29% of organizations have uh, their accounts compromised by hackers. It's, they're going to go after this because it's the most pop, you know, the 365 platform is the most popular right now. So that's what they're going to go after. It's not that Office 365 is bad. It's what's most popular is going to get cracked. Two-factor authentication uh, really makes a big difference there. And another kind of attack, um, closing in, got a few more minutes here. I, I, we will definitely be done by the top of the hour. I know folks need to get back to work. Uh, blackmail emails. These are circulating around and there's different uh, themes but this one is designed to make it look like it's sent from your own mailbox so as you may have noticed I sent this email from your email account and if you if you didn't see check the email ID in other words I have full access to your email account well this is usually <laughs> this is almost always everyone I've seen is just a spoofed email they're not really in the account but sometimes it will include a password so they can pull the password off of just what's been dumped out there on the dark web. And maybe it's not your email password, but you're going to recognize it as one of your passwords because they just pull it out of, um, you know, the, the dark web and they'll throw it, they can throw it in there like a mail merge. And it's really scary to get one of these, but they don't actually have access to your account. Uh, some of these are very threatening and it's, it's just to be aware that this kind of thing is out there. Um, you can imagine how scared somebody would be, you know, you're, you're alone and uh, you get one of these. It's a very scary situation. Um, so to, to kind of start wrapping all this up, um, we talked a, a lot in prior security training sessions about the concept of layers of security or defense in depth. And that's the concept of multiple things working together and to help protect you. And it's the combination of all of them together that will, that will keep you strong. And really security begins and ends with the humans, the human factors, the human firewall, and that's where user training is so important. Uh, a lot of our um, folks in our community are on our micro training platform. We get a training on a different kind of thing. Every every week there's a two minute video that talks about, it. just keeps it top of mind for folks. But you can see vacation scams, brute force attacks, a different kind of things. What's really important, you can do an organized program like this, or you just say, hey, once a month at your staff meeting, just bring up a topic. You can go to our blog and pull something off of our blog if you want, but create that culture of cybersecurity because it only takes one person in your organization uh, to really cause a lot of damage for your entire organization. And these are the kind of, we run phishing tests for folks. Um, we have one active right now and it's getting a 5% click rate. So it's, there's a lot of, um, everybody will say they won't click on one of these. And when you actually run the test, it's, you'll see some clicks. And it's, it's a really great eye opener for folks because they realize, you know what? I got tricked by this one. I could get, and it just says this is an educational, uh, you know, an educational event. But if this were a real threat, it would, it, you know, it'd have caused a lot of damage. But uh, human nature says everybody thinks they would not be the one to click. Um, also, 
policies and procedures, we had a lot of questions around this, but you know, security management policy, security officer, the Massachusetts has a requirement for the written information security plan, so that's an important thing to know. Just if you think about this in advance, because the day, if you, even if you have a false alarm or a real event that needs remediation, it's just going to be the most painful, stressful day. And that's not the time that you're going to be able to think clearly and, and figure out what to do. On that same token, writing a 100-page policy book is also not something you're going to be able to use in a crisis. So keep it simple, but think this through. Where's your data? Where's your important data? Where's it all located? Just get into that cycle of talking about security, creating that culture on a regular basis. It's going to make a big difference. And don't forget about the human factors, factors of security. And I see commercials on TV. There's one for um, Cyber Reason right now. Comcast has one. And they say, oh, you just need this one thing, and then you're 100% secure. It doesn't work like that. Defense in depth, layers of security, that is a common foundation of all cybersecurity plans. There isn't one silver bullet. And really think carefully about how it starts and ends with the person who's sitting in front of the computer who just got that email, and they click on it. All right. so. Must have, just wrapping up here, must have strong security foundation, strong passwords. Uh, think before you click and please, you know, bring that up in staff meetings. Uh, work on that with your training. Reboot at least once a week. Your patches won't be up to date. Keep all your technology fresh. Don't ignore the updates. They're delivered free. Um, don't hang on to super old technology. You're not saving money with it. All right, we have lots of resources on our website. We have this 15 ways it kind of goes over. This is a simple thing you could sit down with and just kind of put some check marks on the things that you're doing, maybe the things that you want to think about doing. That's on our website. Um, I also want to point out um, for anybody who, any business that's in the defense supply chain, we have a lot of resources online for the new CMMC. That's the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification that's coming up. That's being phased in over the next several years into contracts. Uh, on healthcare, you have HIPAA. We're seeing this being phased in on the defense, uh, on the defense industry, and, and we're just going to be seeing more and more regulation like that. Uh, the state of Virginia just came out with a new data privacy and cybersecurity regulation. California has come out with a strong one. Massachusetts was kind of ahead of the pack. Uh, our regulations came out actually. It's going to be the 11th year anniversary next week, March 10th. So, but these are resources that we put out on our website. So please uh, take advantage of them. Mention to folks that you know. And uh, we're here to help. Education is a really big part of what what we do. If you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one security conversation, just have. If you have questions, um, just email info@icar.com, and I'll set up a time that works for you. Uh, if, if you're at all interested, we'll offer a free month of our training platform. If you'd like to try that, see what it is. And anybody on this call, if you want to have a dark web report for your domain, if you're not already doing monitoring with us, uh, we'll run a dark web report. So any, if you're interested in any one of those, just email infoedicar.com. And that comes to Nancy and myself, and uh, we will follow up. And with that, um, it's three minutes before one, and I want to wrap up. And uh, make sure that folks can get back to work. Uh, please check out our blog. We put new stuff out there about every week. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Nancy's on LinkedIn. And uh, we want to put information out there that's helpful for you. And uh, Nancy, if you're still on, do you want to add anything to this? I am. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I always learn a lot whenever you talk about uh, cybersecurity, but uh, one thing that came to mind was many of us are on social media sites every day. And I thought it was really important how you said, don't answer those quizzes, you know, because first we look at them, oh, yeah, this could be fun. Yeah, but yeah. definitely, you know, and of course, you know, the, the common security questions they're asking are all highly personal information that we should never share our address, our street address, um, our dog's name. Yeah. Uh, mother's maiden name, highly personal information. We should never answer those quizzes. Also, Anne, you said to always use two-factor authentication on all our social media sites. So everyone should really take the time to do that. It only takes a couple minutes to do. And yeah. uh, Very lastly, important. you did mention yeah. it twice about restarting the computer. Reboots are so important. So um, that was it. That's great, Anne. Thank you yeah. so much.
And thank you to our audience. I really appreciate our clients and prospects listening in this afternoon. Yeah, and thank you, Nancy, for doing all the outreach. Um, I think we had cl close to 100 people signed up, um, and that's a lot of outreach. Right. We really want to get this message out there. And uh, you'll get a recording of this, and anybody wants a copy of the slides, just reach out to us. So thank you so much thank for joining you, us today. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.